So there's like at least a dozen Pokemon trainers in the Pokemon world, right? And a lot of them make absolutely perfect sense. Bug catchers. They catch bugs. All their Pokemon are bugs. And a firefighter. Well, clearly they would use Pokemon fitting of fighting fires. So water types. See, these make sense, but some trainer classes are a little tricky or are culturally significant and we in the West may not fully understand and appreciate some of them. Like, why are there so many? bug catchers, what even is a sage, and without showing you any pictures, what Pokemon do you think the Smasher trainer class would use? Well here, mainly Lilligant. <laughs> yeah, I'd smash the- Real talk time? I need glasses. Yeah, there, I said it. I've worn these things for months at my desk now, and it's it been an interesting experience. But it makes sense why I'd need them now. I'd spend all day typing typing on a computer, and then I spend all day playing my games, and then I spend the rest of the day just looking at a screen this close in my bed. So my eye health is trash, so it's no wonder I need these. But as a person who used to not wear glasses, and now I have to wear glasses, I've learned the whole system is kind of garbo. But fret not, today's sponsor, Warby Parker, takes the pressure out of the whole thing and simplifies the whole process. Warby Parker is the perfect online eyewear solution when it comes to providing vision care online and in stores, from sunglasses to eyeglasses and contacts, and heck, even eye exams. They've got their eye on you. Glasses start at $95, including prescription lenses, and my favorite part is Warby Parker's free home try-on program. You pick five of your favorite frames that you want to see on your face, and they'll send them to you for free. You keep them for five days to try on all around with the luxury of your own mirror. Ask your friends and family which they like best, or even Warby Parker's own stylists. And yes, even returning the frames is free, even if you decide you don't want any of the five you tried. Try Warby Parker's free home try-on program to try on five pairs of glasses. It's super fun and convenient. There's even a link in the description for you. Simply type it into your URL bar, warbyparker.com slash Loxton. Warby Parker is 2020. And a big thanks once again to Warby Parker for supporting us. So, let's go through the trainer classes, starting with the original staples, the trainer classes we've always had, Gen 1ers. And quick disclaimer, before I have some honorary folks in the comments, there are quite a few generalizations here in this video. Like, I'ma say things like, punk girls use dark type Pokemon. And I don't need you in the comments typing up, um, actually one punk girl uses an Arbok in her team, which is just poison type. Like, yeah, I get it, but an exception to the rule or the norm doesn't make the rule or the norm not a thing. So shush! Comments help the video in the algorithm. I lied. Please tell me every exception to the rule that you know of in individual comments so that I can properly see and appreciate all of them. It's not like I looked all of them up already. He did. Well, I mentioned bug catchers already, so let's start with them. They are a staple in the Pokemon games. I mean, catching bugs as a kid was the main inspiration to the Pokemon series in the first place, which likely is why bug catchers are among the first trainers you ever do battle with in most of the games. Catching cicadas or large beetles with a net and a basket as a kid is a big part of growing up in Japan. And look, they keep their Pokeballs in those little bug baskets. It's cute. Also, yeah, they use exclusively bug-type Pokémon and are primarily found early on in the game, since bug catching is a kid thing to do. The youngster class are little kids too, but unlike bug catchers, they aren't limited to a type of Pokémon, but rather are limited to Pokémon found early on in the games. Rattatas, Zigzagoons, Cricketot, Jarjabug. You know, campers and picnickers are also kids and counterparts to one another, essentially a boy scout and a girl scout. They are often found in groups because of their mutual camping activities, and also because of their adventurous nature, they too aren't limited in what type of Pokémon they use, though, like the youngster, they usually have more Pokémon from early on in the game, but a little bit further on too, and sometimes even starter Pokémon. Picnickers often lean more on grass and water types, and often other girly Pokémon like Ponyta, Clefairy, and Mareep, soft things, while campers lean more on ground and rock types as well as Pokémon like Golduck, Growlithe, and Numel. Hard and sharp things. The trainer class Lass is known just as miniskirt in Japanese. <laughs> huh. Well, they all wear those, they are schoolgirls. And they too aren't limited to a single Pokémon type, and rather just have Pokémon that one would consider cute. Like Skitty, Love Disk, Oddish, Meowth, Flabebe. 
Very few of them have the same Pokémon nowadays, actually, because there are just so many cute Pokémon to choose from. And then Tamers! They are beast tamers, essentially. Circus animal trainers. They got Persian in place of a lion, Arbok for the snake charming, Tauros and Rhyhorn, well they are beasts that charge. He's like a bullfighter too. And there's also Golduck and Sandslash for some reason. Uh, and that that's all. That, that's all of the Pokemon they have originally. Uh, in Gen 2, they get Ursa Ring. You know, circus bears. The jugglers, or gypsies. Uh, I, I understand why they changed that. Uh, is another performer of sorts. And originally, they used psychic type Pokemon. Oh no, geez, of course, with the future singing and they are just. No, 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 it, it, it's innocent, really. Uh, they are just cheating. Yeah, yeah, they're cheating at juggling with their psychic powers. You know, you think you're watching a skilled juggler, but no! You've been gypped! Oh! Uh, slurs aside, uh, they got rid of that in Gen 2. Uh, now he's just a juggler, and they all use Voltorb and Electrode exclusively. Balls with which to juggle, you see. Uh, but there is one exception. Juggler Fritz uses a Mr. Mime, Machoke, and Magmar. All three resemble different circus performers. Uh, another fun fact, they often swap their Pokémon around you know, juggling them. Channelers are Shinto priestesses, and they exclusively use ghost-type Pokémon, meaning only Ghastly and Haunter. Hmm. Well, these priestesses have a job to do. They please the good spirits of the shrine while keeping out the bad ones. So, ghost-type works here wonderfully. Bikers are mean and tough. They don't follow the rules, and there's nothing you can do about it, except maybe beat them in a Pokémon battle. They almost exclusively use coughing and wheezing, but do occasionally add in some fire types with the move Smokescreen, an easy reference to all of the exhaust their bikes put out. Though there is one biker, Ernest, who uses a Togepi, Teddy Ursa, and Meryl, because looks are only what's on the outside. Even big and mean-looking bikers can be kind-hearted. But not all of them. In later generations, bikers would expand their Pokémon selection to a variety of poison, fire, and dark-type Pokémon. But then Q-Balls are on a whole other level! And so you know, because I had to look it up too, Q-Ball, in this case, is a derogatory way to refer to a completely bald guy, especially one who's dumb, often racist, and hangs out at pool bars. His head looks like the Q-Ball in pool. Very smooth and very white. Eventually, this trainer class would be renamed to Roughneck, but either name is still better than the direct translation of their Japanese name, Skinheads. You know, that thing that Q-Ball also means, but is a bit less direct about? Uh, skinheads are the, the whole white supremacy, neo-Nazi biker gang thing. Uh, and you see, this is why things get localized and names get changed. Uh, anyway, Skinheads, uh, Q-Balls, uh, nope. Roughnecks use almost exclusively Fighting-type Pokémon, with a hint of poison, and in later generations, Dark-type would be added to their collections. But again, of course, we have the softies. Q-Ball Gabriel has a Smoochum, and only a Smoochum, and Roughneck Kirby, who is the only Roughneck in Diamond and Pearl, by the way, only has a Cleffa. Just a Cleffa. Black Belts are known as Karate King in Japan, and they are just that, masters of the Karate fighting style, and so they have a Black Belt, the highest rank a practicer can have. While they almost exclusively use Fighting-type Pokémon, they do occasionally throw Rock-types in there, likely for practicing Karate Chops on, because Karate Chops are often done on planks of wood or concrete blocks and rocks. Now here's a beauty. It's hard to tell with the original sprite, but later on it gets more Obvious. These trainers are all very fashionable supermodels. They all seem to be doing fashion poses of sorts. Except for the beauty from X and Y, who is just outgoing grocery shopping. Perhaps a nod to the stereotype that women from Paris are beautiful. Another fun fact is that one of these X and Y beauties, Nova, seems to be Pokémon's first transgender character, with her Japanese version stating, I was a Karate King just half a year ago. The power of medical science is awesome, wouldn't you say? Beauties use all kinds of Pokémon types, but the Pokémon themselves almost always have something to do with looking nice. Like flowery Pokémon, Pokémon with gems, beautiful koi and neon fish, or the glamorous Glammeow, Wormadam, or Lapunny. <clears throat> Bird Keepers! They keep birds, obviously, and use exclusively flying-type Pokémon. Always birds, too. Except for Bird Keeper Dane, who uses a Slowking and an Entei. What? 
Hikers are another staple trainer class, always built big as a bear. Well, almost always. Due to their affinity for hiking up mountains, they always use a combination of rock, ground, and fighting type Pokémon. I mean, someone's gotta use strength. Sailors are also big and strong, but rather than climb mountains, they sail the seas. And as such, while they still use fighting type Pokémon, they swap the rock and ground for water types. Which is also what the swimmer class uses exclusively. For obvious reasons. But look, I look like the swimmer from Sun and Moon. At least in face, not at all in body. And fishermen, same deal, lots of fish. One of them legitimately has an entire team of just Magikarp that are like lower level than the wild Magikarp that you catch there. How did he even manage that? Scientists have an interesting mix, electric and psychic mainly, with a touch of poison, and also they sometimes have dittos and porygons, both of which are science experiment kind of Pokemon. Though I do like how one scientist, Tyrone, is a paleontologist. Super nerd! Aw oh, man, rude. These poor guys, they look like flimsy otakus because that's pretty much what they are. They use a combination of electric, fire, and poison type Pokemon. And by poison, I mean Grimer and Muck because they're weird nerds and they're slimy and probably smell bad. And by fire types, I mean like Vulpix, Ninetales, and Rapidash, the, the like really pretty kind of girly things because like they're super otaku nerds. They're into girly things. They like their Sailor Moon Figmas. Now take a guess what type the Psychic Trainer class uses. Moving on, Poke Maniac. Think a guy who's crazy for Pokemon and who's also a furry. Or I guess a scaly, now that I look at him more. At first, they weren't limited to anything really, though there were a lot of Slowpokes and Nidos, but also just whatever. In Gen 3 and 4, though, the sprite is him wearing a big, stompy sort of partial fursuit. Kind of a Charizard, kind of a Rhydon, Tyranitar, Nido King generic looking thing. It's that kind of Pokemon. And so in Gen 3, he uses the Agron line almost exclusively. There's only one Pokemon that isn't an Agron line, and it's Rhydon. The Rocker! They don't use rock types, they use electric exclusively. Electric guitars and all that. And here's an engineer. Now there's a guy with a real job. They also use electric types near exclusively, as the original Japanese intent with this class is not an engineer, but an old electrician. That's what the class is known as over there. Why do not all engineers are electricians? Oh, the gentleman, or the rich old guy. They pay out big when you beat them, which is often easy to do as their Pokemon, while not bound to any type, is usually based on a weak pet. Think cats, dogs, Chatot, it's a pet parrot, and even a Murkrow, a pet crow, it even has the hat. And the few Pokemon they have that aren't based on pets are usually rich and luxurious types of Pokemon, like Sableye with the gems and all. Now the Gambler went through quite a name change. He was only known as a Gambler back in Gen 1. Afterwards, the class was changed to Gamer. What an epic gamer! And then later still changed to P.I meaning private investigator, uh, but but no, he's still a gambler. It's all their dialogue talks about still, and their strategy is exactly the same too. They care not for which Pokemon they use, but rather which moves they use. They focus on moves like Explosion and Destiny Bond, as well as moves like Horn Drill, meaning moves that have a very low chance of hitting, but if they do, it's always a one-hit knockout. So you know, it's gambling, it's luck over skill. But why private investigator? Well, the sprite in Gen 4, which is when that name changed to that, does look a bit like a private investigator with the trench coat and the coin flipping action, which could be a reference to the PI mobster detective trope started by the blockbuster Scarface. Plus, covering something in a trench coat is sort of a means of censoring it, perhaps showing Game Freak's distaste for needing to remove all the references to gambling in the franchise as the time went on. Even the game corner! The game corner was so much fun! I don't have a gambling problem. Well, at least he's not a burglar. These guys use fire types and coughing. Likely for the smokescreen getaway from the crime scene. But also, there's a cultural tidbit here. The Japanese name of the class is Post-Fire Burglar. Historically, Japan has had an issue with this for over a millennia. Whenever a building would burn down, you'd see people rummaging through the remains to steal whatever they can. 
You see, good metal is very hard to find in Japan, so people would take any chance they could to steal the nails that were holding the building together as they are metal, and thus quite valuable. Also, the burglars use the move thief a lot, uncool. But cool trainers are cool. They are known as ace trainers today, but back in the early gens, the word cool was still really rad and not as generic as it is today. Anyways, there's two of them. Male and female cool or ace trainers. Me from many years ago looks kind of like the ace trainer from Sun and Moon, huh? Well, as their name suggests, they almost always use cool Pokemon. Starters, Absol, Manectric, Pseudo-Legendaries, Bears. Way past cool! And being such ace trainers, they each have a powerful potion at their disposal. Nice. And don't even get me started on the trainers. What? Trainers. What? Glitch trainers. Hey, didn't mess up that time. Glitch trainers are only accessible via the use of glitches. You could think of them as a failsafe or a missing no, but a trainer class instead of a Pokemon. Their teams though, oh man, do not mess with the Glock trainers level 128 Gengar. Heck, even the level 128 Tentacool is a threat. And they also have missing no's themselves. Even P uh, 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 and Pikmin Triangle N. Oh, and watch out for C. Yeah, just C. Which is not to be confused with mm, which may look like a Charizard, but according to the data, it's 23 feet tall. <laughs> Aside from regular old trainers, there's also the Jack Red Trainer class, which also can only be accessed via a glitch. Same with Professor Oak, who has his own class, the Professor Oak class. And Sylph's Chief, that's a class too. It's the Chief of Sylphco, though unlike Professor Oak, he has no programmed party. And, uh, well, that, that, that's all the trainer classes from Gen 1. What time are we at in the video? Oh, this is gonna be long, ain't it? Well, looking ahead, Gen 2 didn't add many, but Gen 3 added a whole buttload, which is an official unit of measurement, by the way. So let's do Gen 1 and 2 together in this video, and the rest will be in a few future videos. Wait. What? What about the most important classes? The gym leaders, the grunts, the rival? I'm not gonna bother explaining those, because everybody knows. And also they are kind of going to have their own videos. We got all the gym leaders explained here. All the Elite Four is here. All the rivals eventually. Okay. I'll be in the comments. So, in order to honor the second games in the series, they added the Twins Trainer class. That's totally the reason. Their whole shtick is that they use pairs of Pokémon that complement each other, or are sort of partner Pokémon to one another. Like Plusle and Minin, Dustox and Beautyfly, Slurpuff and Aromatisse, Pikachu and Clefairy, a nod to Clefairy being sort of the original mascot before Pikachu, we did a whole video about that linked here, but you get the idea. Double battles were not a thing until the following gen, but they'd mostly do double battles from that point onwards. Ah, a teacher. Well, someone's gotta teach those kids. They run the schools, and so in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, for instance, teacher Emily will have the starter that is super effective against the starter you chose, in order to teach you about type disadvantages. Otherwise, they tend to have normal and grass types. Friendly things to help kids learn, I guess. School kids! Another class that doesn't care if you're a boy or a girl. They use a variety of Pokémon, not limited in type, but almost always unevolved until later rematches anyway. They're all still young and have plenty of growing to do. Maybe they grow up and become Poké fans. Basically, geeky parents who love Pokémon. They mainly use cute and popular Pokémon. The Snubbles, Skitties, Pikachu, Meowth, Sentret, those kinds of things. Interestingly, the vast majority of the Pokémon they use are in the Fairy Egg group. The Kimono Girls are a quintet of girls in kimonos. Wow. They do traditional Japanese dances. They also dance to summon Ho-Oh or Lugia for you. Now, there are dozens of dance styles they could be using. Nihon Buyo being my not super educated guess. But as for their Pokémon, each one uses one of the five evolutions at that time. Simple as. Mediums are just that. Spirit mediums. So when I first played Pokémon, I had no idea what that meant, and I just thought, w what does her size have anything to do with this? Is she okay? Mediums are those who claim to speak with the dead via a form of spiritualism. This makes them specializing in ghost and psychic type Pokémon very fitting. And they got censored too! Originally, they are rising their Buddhist prayer beads up in the air as they surge with spiritual power. But in the international release of the game, they just have her having a heart attack instead. 
It's similar censorship to what the sage saw. His hands aren't in a prayer pose in the international version, while they are in the original Japanese one. Another fun fact, though, is that in the Gen 2 remakes, while he does get his Buddhist prayer beads back in the international version, he got a total makeover in the Korean version, likely to directly appear as a Korean monk, who wear red in a similar fashion. Being sages of the Bellsprout Tower, it comes to no surprise that they mainly all use Bellsprout, but a lot of them also have Hoot Hoot and Knocked Owl on their teams. And Ping just has a whole party of Ghastly. Are you okay, Ping? Notably, he's one of the few sages not actually in Bellsprout Tower. Uh, but anyway, the Officer Class, later renamed to Police Officer in Gen 4. I love the Police Officer logo in Sword and Shield, and I also love how jolly the Sword and Shield Officer looks. It makes me think of the old guy from We'll Take It Away, just a kind-hearted, jolly old chap who does what he needs for the law, but will always try to be polite about it. He understands you're under distress. And then there's the Gen 5 NYPD guy, just looking for an excuse to use that thing. Originally, officers used Growliths exclusively, police dogs, you know? And that's still the case today, but they've added Stoutlands and Bulltones. However, in Diamond and Pearl, they all use a Hoot Hoot or Knockdowl, along with a fighting type, like Metadite or Machoke. They're always on the lookout for crime, and then use a real crime fighter! Super effective on dark types, as police tend to be. Now guitarists! I freaking love! Gen 5's guitarist. This is my aesthetic. They primarily use electric types, like the rocker before, but later in Gen 3, they all use electric types and a Pokémon from the Exploud line. The blaring speaker Pokémon. Interestingly though, in Gen 5, most of them don't have electric types, but poison or dark types instead. Yeah, punk rock is poisoning the airwaves, I tells ya! Fire breathers, I'd like you to take a guess. Yeah, they're fire type users, but a lot of them also have a cough coughing. Ah, it's the smoke. Borders! Radical. Ice types only. I mean, snowy mountains and all. The same goes for skiers. Well, primarily anyway, but they add flying type to the mix too. Helps them get to the top of the mountain to then ski down. I love when they think about how a Pokemon would help them in what they do. Like, the only skier in the manga uses an Abra who teleports him away from objects he's careening towards because he's a bad skier. And lastly, the final new trainer class that Gold and Silver added. Uh, no, it was Crystal. Interesting, a new trainer class in the weird third director's cut kind of game. Anyway, it's the Mystery Man. There's only three of them in the entire Pokemon franchise, and one is in Gale of Darkness, and the other is only in Pokestar Studios, so do they really count? Well, the Pokemon they use are mysterious, I guess. They're mainly Psychic and Ghost and Electrode. Gligar. Okay, uh, I don't think they intended to use Mystery Man more than once originally, so is it really a class, or is it just this one dude who's important to the plot of Crystal? Hmm. I'll let you decide. And that covers the original Pokémon Trainer classes, Gen 1 and 2. A lot of names changed over the years, and, uh, for good reason. <laughs> Uh, so this'll be a multi-part series for sure. Next we'll do Gen 3. Hope you check it out. It'll be linked here when it's done. And until next time, never stop using your noggin.